Okay, in this video we are going to talk about completing the square and then integrating, which is a technique you might find yourself having to use sometimes. Um, and so just really quickly, when you end up using this, kind of a, a list that, it's just off the top of my head, this is not a perfect list. Um, but the first thing is, it looks like u substitution might work, but then du doesn't quite work out immediately. Um, that's a time when you might want to do this. Uh, it looks like natural log, but it's kind of a bit off. Um, it almost looks like an inverse trig type of integral, uh, so an integral that would end up as a inverse trig function. And then uh, I left this off the list, but it's quadratic in the denominator. That's a very common time you'll use this. Um, so let's take a look at one. So uh, we have the integral of dx over x squared plus 6x plus 10. Um, this is an example of how I typically do these, uh, especially on AP problems, because they almost always work out this way. Um, if you look at it, uh, you see there's something that's almost a perfect square. Um, so that right there, x squared plus 6x, almost a perfect square. Um, so I know that x plus 3 quantity squared would be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to look at uh, this part is already matched up. And then I need a 9, but I already have a 10. So what I can do is I can actually rewrite. So I can do x squared plus 6x. And now I'm going to take the 10, and I'm going to divide it up into plus 9 and plus 1. If I combine 9 and 1, I get 10 again. Um, so this is actually a really common way that I do these problems. Um, and again, it's because most of the problems that show up on the AP exam, uh, this technique just works. Um, and it's kind of a shortcut. So dx, um, 1 plus the quantity, um, x plus 3 squared. So I've completed the square on the, the trinomial, and I moved it around so it looks exactly like what I have memorized. And then this I just kind of recognize is arctan of x plus 3, um, so, and then plus c. That's uh, by far the most common way that you end up doing this. Let's take a look at another one. Um, so here I have the integral of dx over the square root of that quadratic. Um, so that looks really messy, and I, off the top of my head, other than completing the square, have no idea how I would do this integral. So what I do is take the quadratic out. So negative x squared minus 10x minus 24. I'm going to factor a negative out of the first two things. So I kind of just rearrange this uh, for convenience. So negative quantity x squared minus 10x. Leave a big space here because that's where I'm going to complete the square. And then minus 24. And then on the inside, I have this plus 10. So divide by 2 squared, you get plus 25. But don't forget, if you add 25, you also have to subtract 25. And then the first three things here... Um, are a perfect square trinomial, so it's negative quantity, that's going to be x plus 5 quantity squared, and then I have a minus negative 25, so that actually becomes plus 25 and still a minus 24. This I can rearrange into 1 minus the quantity x plus 5 squared, which is good because if I put that inside a radical in the denominator, it looks exactly like arc sine, so I get this perfect arc sine integral, um, so this is going to be sine inverse, of x plus 5, and then plus c. So I'm going to do one more that's um, just a little more complicated, just so you can kind of see how things could be more difficult. So this one looks a lot like the origin, the first one that we did, um, and I'm probably going to sort of do it the same way. Um, so I've got x squared plus 4x. I'm inclined to just break up that 8 right now into plus 4 and plus 4 and kind of move on, but I'll show you uh, not a lot of people actually do that, so I'll show you instead. Take x squared plus 4x. Um, to complete the square, I've got the 4. So I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to square that and get plus 4, but also minus 4. And then this, I can complete the square on the trinomial. Get x squared, uh, sorry, x plus 2 quantity squared, and then minus 4. Let's go back and replace the x squared plus 4x with this. So dx. I'm replacing x squared plus 4x with that. And then the plus 8 is still there. So you can see I end up exactly where I was going to end up. Um, with uh, I've rearranged it so it looks a little more familiar to me, but I get 4 plus the quantity x plus 2 squared. I would have been inclined in the very first step to make the denominator x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 4, like break up the 8, and I would have jumped straight to this step. But you can do it either way you want. It doesn't make a difference. Um, so this is a little more complicated because it's not perfectly arctan, but it's almost arctan. So what I'm going to do is factor a 4 out of everything in the denominator. 
And remember, factoring out is kind of equivalent to dividing by. So um, if I divide 4 by 4, I get 1. If I divide x plus 2 quantity squared by 4, I get x plus 2 quantity squared over 4. Um, so now I'm going to take out the 1 fourth, and that gives me this. And I'm actually going to rewrite this. So I have x plus 2 quantity squared over 4. Uh, I'm going to rewrite that as x plus 2 over 2, the whole quantity squared. Um, and now it's looking a lot like arctan. If you have a lot of experience with that, you would probably just write down the answer at this point. But if not, you would make a u substitution. So u is x plus 2 over 2, which means that 2 du is equal to dx. I can rewrite the integral in terms of u. So 2 du, 1 plus u squared. And um, the 2 and the 1 fourth cancel down to 1 half. And then it's just arctan or tan inverse of u plus c. But then u is x plus 2 over 2. And we get that, plus c, and we're done. Um, so that's three examples of completing the square and then integrating. It's something that you definitely might have to do on the AP exam. Um, and just in general in calculus, this comes up quite a bit. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.